We've talked about what the derivative of f means, graphically speaking. Now what we want to do is kind of take it one step further and think about what uh, would the graph of a derivative look like. If I graph the whole thing, uh, all the different values of the derivative out, if I graph that, what, what is it going to look like compared to the original function? So that's <clears throat> the goal of what we're doing here is I want to take this function f and then sketch a graph of its derivative, <clears throat> a separate graph of its derivative. Okay? And so there's, there's just a couple of things uh, for this one to point out and then a couple more on the handout here, working off the handout <clears throat> that, that we need to talk about. Um, the first, when we have one like this, the first thing that we want to do is, is we want to look for those zero values of the derivative because the value of the derivative in each, at each point <coughs> is going to be what the slope is on the graph of f. And so if I have, uh, the easy ones to pick out are the ones where I have the derivative equal to zero. Right, the derivative equals zero at the horizontal tangents. And so where do I have a horizontal tangent? Well, I have a horizontal tangent here. It looks like at, uh, I didn't put my scale on here, but uh, I've got a horizontal tangent at two, don't I? Positive two. So that means at the f prime at 2 equals 0. With me, right? Because I've got a horizontal tangent. The slope of that, the derivative is the slope, and the slope of this tangent line here is 0, so the derivative is 0. Well, what that translates over here to, all right, so if I'm plotting the derivative points <coughs> at, neg at, at positive 2, well, at positive 2, the derivative is 0. So over here, we're going to be right on the x-axis there. Because this is giving the derivative value. So at 2, the derivative is 0. So that would be here. <coughs> OK? Now, <coughs> the other thing that does is uh, kind of thing. You don't have to necessarily draw this in. But <coughs> those horizontal tangents break up the graph usually into uh, pieces. This one's got two pieces, so I've got a, a right and left part of that. But what do you notice about the derivatives on this side of the two? What kind of values do the, does the derivative have on this side of two? Well, if you draw in, uh, without you know, going into specifics, you know, if I draw them in all the way up to here, just kind of draw in a couple, the derivatives being the slope of the tangent here, they're all negative, right? So f prime is negative on this side of 2. And then on the other side of 2, well, they're positives, right? Think about the tangent lines there. Well, let's, let's focus on this side for just a second. All the derivatives over here are negative. Now, <clears throat> if we get a little more specific here, what do they do as the further I get out from 2? Well, they start, this is our slope here, which is, you know, it's not a real steep negative, but it's it's negative. It gets a little steeper here, so it's increasing negative. And then here it gets steeper yet, so it's more negative. You see what I'm saying? So the values as I pro progress out from 2, they start small negative and get bigger negative, okay, as they go out from 2. But what that translates to over here, and then you can do some, like here I could say, well, that looks like it's a negative, negative 1. That's my derivative there. <clears throat> this one, maybe that looks like the derivative is, uh, I don't know, negative 3. And this one's a negative 5 here. So it, you see, that's, a, that's just kind of verifying. <clears throat> well, what that means is over here then, it just keeps getting more and more negative the further and further out it gets. So what it, it, it winds up kind of lining up. You don't have to do specific values. Just know that the further I get out from 2, the f prime values get more and more negative. Well, below the x-axis, that's the f primes are negative, right, over here. 
Okay. <clears throat> Over here then, well, these, like we said, these are positive. And the further and further I get, the more and more positive they get. That small positive, that's a little bigger positive. And that, so these are going kind of the opposite of that. They're getting more and more positive, which would mean they're going up on the uh, grid here. <coughs> so yeah, that's going to be the graph of my derivative in this particular case. Okay, and we'll try. We'll try some others as we go along. Some of them are actually uh, a little easier than this. Let's look at B there. B, I've got uh, just a straight line. And I call that function G. So let's think about what. <coughs> the derivative g prime will be. So I want to graph the whole thing, all the g primes. Well, in this case, I don't have any horizontal tangents, do I? <clears throat> no. Matter of fact, I've got a straight line, and we talked about this last time. When I have a straight line, if I want, say, Let's just pick a point here. Uh, let's go out to 2 just to kind of make it up here. <clears throat> if I want the derivative at 2, how, do I, how, do, how would I get that? Since I, I can't really draw a tangent line in there because it's a line. Remember we said that the derivative is just going to be the slope of the line? Because technically that's what derivative is. It's the slope of the curve at that particular point. Well, if I've got a line, the derivative there is just the slope of the line. <clears throat> so the whole thing here, the derivative is just the, whatever the slope of that line is, which, you know, it's, it's probably bigger than one, it looks like. I don't have my scale. I've got it scaled off in the, uh, the x-axis, but I don't have it scaled on y-axis, so it's really open to interpretation. But <clears throat> um, the derivative here is the same for throughout the whole thing, right? Since the slope is the same for all, the derivative is the same, is constant, you would say, <coughs> for the whole thing. Well, what does that mean over here? Well, let's just, let's just put a number. What would you say the derivative is there? Maybe 3, something like that. The slope is 3, so the derivative is 3. <coughs> let's call it. So over here, since the derivative is the same throughout, it's going to be 3 or whatever it is the whole way across. So whatever, I'm choosing 3. The derivative is 3 on the whole thing. So it's 3 here, 3 here, 3 here. What do I get here? Just a horizontal line for the derivative. Yeah. So if you've got a straight line like this, the derivative graph is just going to be a horizontal line. Make sense? Because the slope's constant. The derivative is constant. So that would mean horizontal line. So anytime you have a straight line, or well, a line uh, <coughs> sloped anyway, like this, um, you get a horizontal line. OK? Now, what do we have there for C? Well, we break it up. <coughs> oh, OK. Let's talk about one thing before we do that. Okay, so C, the handout, I've got a V-shape graph. <coughs> but what is, uh, you know, we look for horizontal tangents, but when we've got, we've got a feature here, we should probably also mention, we've got a corner, don't we? And last time we talked about Corner, what, what happens at the derivative uh, for the derivative at the corner? It does not exist, right? So, <clears throat> what am I calling this? P. And so, uh, P prime does not exist at 2. At x equals 2, because we've got a corner, right? So, that's our first, uh, first note here <clears throat> when we're graphing P prime. at 
two, the derivative does not exist, and so we're either going to have, uh, we're just not going to have a point there. And we'll, we'll talk about what, what we actually do to designate that in just a second. Okay, but on either side of two, what have we got? Well, we've got a line here, this way, and then on the other side of two, we've got a line here. Well, that's similar to what we had on the B uh, example, <laughs> except now we've got a, a negative slope on this side and a positive slope on this side, which means we've got a negative derivative on this side and a positive derivative on this side. But since they're lines, they're constant, so it's a constant negative, and this is a constant positive. So what that's going to translate to over there is horizontal lines. Okay? So we've got a constant negative value here for the derivative. This is a constant positive value. So those are going to be horizontal lines over here. The only difference is one's negative, one's positive. So what does that mean over here? <clears throat> well, uh, this one's a little less steep than the B example. So I'm going to... I'm going to say this, this is a negative one slope. Slope's negative one here, which means P prime is negative one here on this side, because it's not as steep as that one. So just, you know, the steepness will tell you how, how big or how small to go, all right? Um, P prime is negative one. So what does that mean over here? It's a constant derivative, so it's a horizontal line, but it's negative, so it's a negative horizontal line. See what I'm saying? And I'm about a little tired, higher there it should be. But it's a horizontal line in the negative value range. Until it gets a two. And then what happens at two? Derivative does not exist. So I better not put a point there, I better put a dot, an open dot. And then after two, well the slope's probably something around positive one. So that means P prime, since that's a slope as well, <clears throat> P prime is one, so over here I've got a constant positive one value. So it's positive one all the way across, except at two it does not exist. So yeah, you got the open dots on either side of two there, or at two. Does that make sense? Okay. So on the back side of the handout then, putting this all together. <clears throat> Number one on the back. Here's the function here. All right, so this is one where I've got the horizontal tangents. <clears throat> and like we said, uh, let's call this y equals f of x. So if I want to graph f prime over here, here. <clears throat> Yeah, these start with the horizontal tangents. Where do I have a horizontal tangent? Well, I've got one here, and I've got one here. And so those are going to be zeros over there, or x intercepts, at 2 and negative 1. So at 2 and negative 1, the derivative is 0. So that's going to mean that x intercepts are on the x axis over there. <clears throat> okay? But like I said, those. You don't have to draw necessarily this end, but those horizontal tangents break up the graph nicely into three parts. To the left here of negative one, what kind of slopes do I have? Well, you can draw them in if you want, but I've got positive slopes, don't I? So f prime then is positive from negative infinity to negative one. They're positive. So over here, f prime is positive above the x-axis. So F prime is above the x-axis over here because it's positive slopes. Now, they start pretty large negative, uh, sorry, large positive. They're pretty steep here. So you've got a large positive out here. Then they progressively come in and they eventually come into zero, don't they? So you start large positive and come into zero. Now what happens between negative one and two? Well, what are the slopes? Negative slopes, right? So f prime is negative in here, and so it's gonna be, when I graph it, it's gonna be below the x-axis over here, or f prime graph. 
But how do they progress? Well, <clears throat> they start kind of small negative, get a little bigger negative, a little steeper, but then they turn back around and come back to the small negatives. So they start small negative, which, you know, there's come out from zero there, so that makes sense. They get a little bigger, but then at some point they turn around because they have to come back to that zero slope there, zero real. So you see how that works? You just progressively, small negative, little bigger, 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 then it starts coming back less and less negative. So it comes back to zero. So it's got to connect up there. Yes? And then what happens out here? Well, we're back to positive slope time, positive derivatives. Start small positive, bigger and bigger positive. Question on that one? multiple corners, don't we? And at the, at the corners, the derivative does not exist. So those, those are going to be holes in the graph. We're going to have some holes in the graph at, uh, at the uh, corners, like, like we had on C over here. All right, <clears throat> but, so that, that's a negative 4, 0, and positive 4. So what happens to the uh, left over here of negative 4? Well, we've got a straight line. We've got a constant slope. So we've got a constant derivative, which over here, that's going to be a horizontal line over there. Um, let's just call it, I don't know, looks like one. If it was a little steeper, I might go bigger, but let's just call it one here. So my derivative is one here, <clears throat> so that's going to be coming across here about at one until we get to negative four. And then negative four, the derivative does not exist because i got a corner. Got a hole. Then from negative four to zero, we got a negative slope. Let's call it negative one. Constant, so that's a horizontal line. Negative one-ish, okay? Negative one to zero. But at zero, that derivative does not exist, so I've got a hole there. And then zero to four, well, we're back to the positive one, we're calling it slope, right? Positive slope. And then forward to the end, you got your negative slope back. <clears throat> How's that? Make sense? Right, so, I mean, there's there's all sorts of graphs. Um, other things could happen, but uh, hope that I give you a, a bit of a start on how to graph those. <clears throat> 